And on the issue of abortion, Molly, your new piece for Vanity Fair is entitled Overturning Roe has been a horror show. And you would think that Democrats could run just on this issue. You write in part, quote, everything we worried about, every worst case scenario is happening right before our eyes. But perhaps the worst part of this post row political landscape is that the anti-abortion right hasn't been satiated and appears emboldened despite a string of electoral defeats in 2022 and 2023, including in red states. Republicans long argued that abortion should be left to the states, but since the conservative majority struck down Roe, effectively doing just that, you have Republicans not only looking to prevent states from voting on abortion rights, but also calling for a federal abortion ban. Even scarier, Republicans are even trying to ban abortion pills using the Comstock Act, an 1873 federal law. The next Republican president, Axios notes, could stop most abortions without Congress. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court is taking up an abortion pills case, setting up, according to the Times, a high stakes fight over the drug that could sharply curtail access to the medication, even in states where abortion remains legal. For years, I was told I was being a Cassandra about the danger to women of a post-Roe America. But if anything, the reality is even bleaker than I imagined. Because right now, Molly, right now, there are women in states with six-week abortion bans in Florida, across the country, who have pregnancies that they can't get the abortion health care they need and they are being it's like the dark ages they're being forced to have stillborn babies they're being forced to be sterilized this is happening today yeah they're being asked to bleed out in the parking lot to wait you know i mean these are doctors who are terrified of treating they're worried about losing their medical licenses. And so they're saying to this woman, I can't take the chance. And even with the Texas, with the Kate Cox case, which was such an important case because you really saw Republicans, Texas AG Ken Paxton said, it's up to sick. the doctors, right? Because they're doing that in the hopes of getting these doctors so scared that they can't treat, so worried about losing their medical licenses. And you have these women, it's not even that they want abortions, it's that they have, you know, lost pregnancies or have these unviable pregnancies and can't get any med medical treatment whatsoever because the doctors are scared. And what we're seeing again and again is the truth, which is abortion is health care. And, yeah. and, 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 and Claire, what Molly said is, is uh, and, and what she wrote uh, is so telling. It, it's, it's worse than she ever imagined. Yeah. It's worse than anybody ever imagined. Um, you look at, like, for instance, let's look at, like, even swing states, Wisconsin, an 1849, like, abortion ban, 1849. That was the key issue in the Supreme Court race up there. In Arizona, I think it's like an 1862, 1863, near total ban. We're now talking about the Comstock Act from 18, the 1870s. Republicans embracing abortion bans from the 1800s that are risking the lives of our, our wives, our daughters, our friends, our neighbors. It's shocking. Yeah, and I want to tee off a point that Molly made because I think it's really important to remember this. What did Paxton do after the lower court said Kate Cox uh, certainly should have the medical care her doctor was recommending? in a heartbreaking, horribly painful situation for that woman and her family. What did Paxton do? He immediately wrote the hospital and doctors and threatened them with prison. Threatened them with That's prison. So and then what does the Supreme Court of Texas say? Well, a doctor could give her the abortion today if he, he or she said it was needed. They, they are trying to have this both ways. And when doctors are afraid to treat, when they are being threatened with prison, women are put in an untenable position in terms of their survival. I'm not talking about whether or not they get to keep having children, which this woman desperately wanted to do. I'm talking about whether or not they die. 
The doctors mm -hmm. are so afraid in these states that have done this. And this is not a winning political position for the Republican Party. I got news for them. Um, and what's happening is the women who are getting health care are the ones who are getting help getting to states that will provide it. They are fleeing states like Missouri and Texas and Arkansas, and they are going to states like Illinois or Kansas or other states who are still providing basic health care to women. But this is where we are in America right now, and this should be the defining issue of 2024 for everyone who's running for office, because if it's Correct. not, then you deserve to lose, because this is one that America agrees with us on. And, 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 and Claire, we, we've been talking about yes. the presidential race. It is so important that Donald Trump is held to account and that his words are used against him every day when he bragged about terminating Roe v. Wade. He bragged, his words, he bragged about getting rid of a woman's right to choose. And she should be punished and, if she gets and, an abortion, right. which is happening. And, so. and, and Donald Trump saying that women should be punished if they get abortion. Now I read in the New York Times, on the front page of the New York Times, that Donald Trump's now saying, oh, overturning Roe v. Wade was a mistake. They, Claire, they can't let him have it both ways. No, they cannot. They cannot. And this guy is trying to back the truck up. And I mean to tell you, there needs to be a, a, a full on assault. And by the way, let's not leave out some others that overturned Roe v. Wade. How about Ted Cruz? Yeah. He overturned Roe yeah. v. Wade. He was right on in line with getting these judges, rushing them to the bench, Amy Merrick Cohen, rushing her to the bench in a way that was so hypocritical after what they did to Merrick Garland. What about Senator Scott in Florida? He, he overturned Roe v. Wade. Uh, these are two senators that are not, I mean, Ted Cruz, has he stood up to Ken Paxton and said, quit threatening hospitals when they're trying to give life-saving health care to women? No, no, he's hiding under his desk wishing they'd quit talking about it. But really, these are there's senators that are vulnerable on this because they were part of this effort to deny a president a seat on the Supreme Court when he was duly elected and nominated someone and to rush someone through in an unprecedented fashion after people had already started voting for president.